Begin. Please enter the room. Hello, James. My name is Dr. Rivera. I'm one of the junior doctors here at the GP. Can I just confirm your name and your age, please? Hi, Dr. Yeah, my name is James Smith and I'm 45 years old. What would you like me to call you? James is fine. Okay, James, thank you. I understand you've been feeling tired. Yes, Doctor, I've been feeling um, very much tired for the last weeks. Sorry to hear that. Um, when did it start? When did you start feeling tired? I would say about three weeks. Okay. And did you notice anything in particular that might have triggered it? Mm, not that I can recall. All right. Do you feel like it's progressing or getting worse? Yes, yes, it's uh, slightly worsening day by day. Okay, and any associated symptoms with this tiredness? No, it's just tiredness throughout the day. Throughout the day, all right. Have you felt sick or vomited? No. Have you lost any weight? No. Have you noticed any lumps or bumps in your body? No. Any night sweats? No. Have you noticed any blood in your stool or in your urine? No. Or in a dark stool? No, nothing in particular. James, do you have any medical conditions? Uh, yes, uh, I suffer from depression. Okay, and are you being treated for depression? Yes, uh, I've been seeing uh, the GP practice for, for depression, yeah. Are you receiving talk therapy or are you taking any medications or, or both? Yes, uh, I'm, uh, I'm receiving uh, talk therapy mm -hmm. and I'm also taking a medication too. Which one, if I may ask? I take, I believe it's called Citalopram. Okay. And when were you started on Citalopram? Uh, about three weeks ago. Yeah. Oh, three weeks ago. Yeah. Okay, so right around the time you started feeling tired. Um, yeah, pretty much about the same time, yeah. Right. Do you have any other conditions apart from depression? No. Do you take any other medications? No. Have you got any allergies? No. Any conditions running in the family, like in the thyroid gland, in your liver, in the liver, kidneys, blood disorders, anything like that? Family? No. Okay. What do you do for work, James? I work in construction. Right. Do you wear appropriate PP? Uh, yes, yes, we do, yeah. All right. Smoke? No. Drink? Uh, only socially. How much would you say you drink, James? About a pint. A pint every two weeks. Okay. James, before moving on, what do you think is causing this, this worsening tiredness? Um, I'm not sure, doctor. Just um, mm -hmm. this whole tiredness has, has overwhelmed me and I just uh, want to get well soon. Yeah, um, we're, we're going to tr certainly try to do that. Um, is there anything else worrying you? Uh, no, nothing, nothing else yet. Okay, so I'd like to examine you, James. Uh, I'd like to have a feel of your, of your neck, your thyroid gland, have a listen to your chest, have a feel of your tummy, and have a feel of your pulse. Is that okay? Yeah, that's fine, yeah. No examination required, exams are normal. James, remaining. I think I know why you're tired. Why is it, Doctor? So one of the salts in your blood, uh, sodium, is low. And why is it? So I think it's related to citalopram, the tablet you're taking for depression. Okay. Alright. So, citalopram can cause low sodium in some patients and your test results show that your sodium is low. So, I believe that's the reason why you're feeling tired. Okay. And then, what do you suggest we can do? So, we need to stop citalopram to prevent the sodium from going any lower. And we can switch it for another tablet. Okay. Um, you see, Doctor, Citalopram has worked very well with me mm -hmm. um, in combination with the talk therapies. Isn't there any other alternative we can do? Yeah, there certainly is. So, uh, Citalopram is just one of the tablets, one of the options to treat depression. Uh, there are other tablets with similar effects that do not cause low sodium. So, what I think we can do is I can have a chat with my seniors and with the psychiatrist to see which of these tablets I can give you instead of citalopram. So what I suggest we do is I'll have a chat with a psychiatrist to see whether we can switch you to another one so that you don't take citalopram anymore, you take another tablet. And that way we are treating your depression and we are preventing your sodium from going any lower. Okay, that sounds, sounds like a plan to me. Okay, 
So let's do that then. I think I'm happy to send you home. Um, just a certain couple of things you need to keep in mind whilst being home. Red flags for low sodium. Um, feeling dizzy. Uh, vomiting. Chest pain. Palpitations. Okay, if you get any of those symptoms, please come back to, to the practice. Okay. okay. Those I'll are so. red flags for low sodium. I'll schedule you an appointment in a week. Um, to make sure that the sodium is going back to normal, we're gonna repeat your blood tests. Is that okay? Yeah, that's great, Doctor. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. I've done a lot of talking, James. Uh, what is is everything okay with the plan? Is there anything that you'd like to talk about? No. Yeah, it sounds um, it sounds like a good plan to me. Yeah. Okay. I think I don't have any further questions. Okay. Great. So, let me get back to you. Uh, don't leave just yet. I'll have a chat with my seniors and with my psychiatrist colleagues, colleagues so that we can start you on, on the other medication instead of the telegram, okay? Sure. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Move on to the next station. Uh, so I've gone through your station, so we're going to review it. And what, what we're going to do is that we're going to discuss every section of the station and the things that were done good and the things that we need to improve, okay? Sure. All right. start when did you start feeling tired okay so the first section of the station is the greetings okay so we use the grips as a mnemotechnic to understand the steps that you have to follow when you start a station okay so in the beginning you were able to greet the patient say uh, hello I am and you you put your name uh, you also mention who you were in terms of the role which is very good and you're trying to uh, confirm identity of the patient which is very good However, that being said, you did ask for age rather than date of birth. So it's very important that we ask for the name and date of birth All as right. well. Okay, cool. Yep. Now, the last bit of the um, of grips when you use the introduction to station is the patient, how would they like to be called, which you asked very, very well. And the last thing you need to summarize the reason why they're there. Right. So you mentioned that the patient was uh, tired. Yeah. That's the reason why he came to, um, to, to GP today. But you forgot to mention that um, he had some bloods taken two weeks prior. Yeah. So it's very good to say, so I understand that you've had some tiredness and because of this we've done some tests and you're here for the results. Right. It's a good way of summarizing you can go into your the next section. All right. Okay. Cool. Yep. So, during this first section, when you do your presenting complaint, which is the story of your presenting complaint, depending on whether this is pain or something else, we tend to use Socrates or Dipara. Yeah. So, I like that your questioning was very thorough and had a good sequential to it. However, you missed a few questions that could have been useful, because during this stage of the station, you should be able to identify uh, roughly about five differential and try to rule them out, which you sort of did. So, first thing is your onset, which you asked, yeah. how, how long ago did this, this started? And then your progression, you mentioned that, is it getting worse? And you and the patient did say that it's getting worse. Then, duration we know that it's basically three weeks, which is yeah. fine. Um, and then you missed, um, or you forgot to ask about aggravating factors and relieving factors, which is quite useful to know. Yeah. Uh, especially because that could give you a lot of clues about what the underlying problem is. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And then finally, when we go to the uh, associated symptoms, when you use the, the question itself as associated symptoms, some patients might not understand that. So it's really good to just sort of ask specific questions about the things that you think might be going on related to differentials. Right, okay. yeah, cool. So let's say if this patient is coming with tiredness and you're thinking about anemia, you can ask, have you noticed any bruising? Or have you noticed that you get short breath? Or do you get like palpitations, mm -hmm. which could be potentially related to anemia and tiredness? If you think this patient's having maybe uh, some thyroid problems, like hypothyroidism, you can think about weight gain or constipation. So you need to be very specific about the questions you ask. And in that sense, you'll be able to rule out your differentials and at this point you'll know what the diagnosis is. Then the rest of the session becomes a bit more easier. Yeah, that okay. makes sense, yeah.
So, during this section, you're asking about your other two pieces, past medical history yeah. and personal history. Yeah. And I really like what you did there, because you asked about medical conditions at the same time what medication they were taking, yeah. which in a way is useful because you can link the condition with the medication. Yeah. You also have the maftosa with yeah. your medication section as well, yeah. which is quite useful. And if you forget anything, you can ask that yeah. as well. Um, one thing that you skip on this section was personal history. Yeah. Now, personal history can be useful or not depending on the case. Yeah. And I would agree with you in this one that it's not really necessary or relevant. Yeah. Because when we ask about personal history, we ask about uh, sexual history, uh, recreational drugs, uh, menstrual periods, and birth control. Yeah. So usually the kind of, yeah. and I think in this particular case is not really relevant so yeah. I do agree with you with that yeah and then you move on to your muff dosa so yeah. let's have a look at the muff dosa okay so during this section, you're doing your muff dosa, which yeah. you did quite good. Yeah. Uh, very, it had a very smooth transition between questions, which is something that you are trying to accomplish in PLAB. Yeah. Um, so, because you already had the medications before, uh, you didn't really ask again, which is okay. Yeah. Sometimes I would say, I always ask, because they might take something over the counter. Right. So, do you take any medications over the counter as well? Because mm -hmm. that would be quite useful. Uh, then you asked about allergies, well done. Mm -hmm. Then, in terms of family history, uh, there's different ways you can ask for it, mm. and if there's anything running in the family, it's actually quite useful. Very, very straightforward question. Yeah. And if you think that there is something specific that you want to know about the past medical history, that it might be related to your diagnosis, which you already have at this moment, yeah. then you could ask about those specifics. If not, I think an open question is quite good. Yeah. Cool. Okay? Now, moving on to uh, travel history. Yeah. The, I don't think it was relevant in this case, so I would agree to omit it. Yeah. However, that being said, if you have good time management, you might as well just ask for it. Just yeah. It sounds a bit more complete in terms of when you do it. Yeah. Um, your uh, when you asked about question history, that was very good. Straightforward, what you do for a living. Yeah. Now, one thing I would recommend is you can add, how is this affecting your work? Yeah, of course. Because that's quite important to know the, you yeah. know, the whole, whole round of the patient. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then moving forward to social history, you asked about drinking and alcohol. Mm. It's always good to ask about the mood while you're here. How's your mood? Yeah. Because I think in this case, and specifically this patient, and when we go into the diagnosis, you'll see why that's actually quite relevant. Yeah. Um, and then who's at home is important to know because what if they're alone, if they're struggling, what if they need help, support from the community, so all kind of things are quite useful to know. All right. Okay. And then your close, close uh, argument, which is anything else. Mm. It's quite good. Okay. Okay, uh, so in this section, when you when you ask about examination, um, not every station is meant to have an examination in it. Yeah. Okay. Now it's always good to offer that you're going to do an examination or perform an examination because just just the way you would normally do. Yeah. A clinic. Now I like the way you told the patient, "I'm going to do this and this in a very simple manner." Yeah. Okay. It's always good to add. This is gonna involve me, or it's gonna involve you um, being exposed from the waist up. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. very specific about the exposure that the patient will need. Yeah. And then you mention what you are gonna do. So this is gonna involve what I'm gonna do. Which yeah. Which is very good. Yeah. And then at the end, you did ask, "Is that okay?" Yeah. And they say yes. So that's good consent. Yeah. And that's very good. Now in PLAB, what's gonna happen if you're meant to do the examination? As soon as you get up to trying to do the examination, the examiner will stop you. And then they'll carry on and say it's normal, or they'll tell you what the finding is. Oh, yeah. Okay. If the if you're meant to do the examination, no one will tell you anything, and you're likely to just get up and do it. But there's going to be a lot of clues in the room, like the patient might have a gown, there might be a mannequin in the room, so that sort of things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's very useful. So this is this is very good what you've done here. So you've you've sort of told the diagnosis in a very 
slow, very explanatory manner, which is good. Mm. Simple terms. Yeah. You tell that the one you take it is making one of your salts to be lower than he should be. Yeah. And that's why the symptoms you yeah. are experiencing is perfectly yeah. fine. Now, um, in this sort of at this point specifically, um, it's when you should have had your results, which you already know yeah. about the patient, and then you would normally read the results to the patient and say, so yeah. I've had a look at your results, I have it with me, yeah. and the results are, and then you just tell them this, 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 yeah, this, yeah. and then your sodium, which is one of the salts, seems to be low. Yeah, okay. perfect sense. The other thing I really liked about this part is that you, you used the silence very good. You made a pause to see what the patient was going to react to, whether it's going to be in shock, was it going to be like a good reaction? Mm. So that was very good. So when you explain diagnosis to patients and management as well, you should be able to provide small pulses every time you give a bit of chunk of information. Yeah. So chunk and check, that's what they call it. So yeah. give information, you wait, make a pause, see what they, how they react. Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Now, explaining the management is very tricky. Yeah. Because we tend to use a lot of, uh, of medical terms. And yeah. that's what we like to avoid. Yeah, that. certainly. So uh, I, I really like the way you did it. it. You sort of went through step by step with a bit of pause. What are we going to do? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen? And then the patient offer you an issue and you addressed it right away. So it's very important if the patient tells you I'm concerned about something mm -hmm. or not to actually, um, to actually address the problem right there and then, yeah. without ignoring it or, or talking over the patient and just sort of going in a different direction. Address the problem, because yeah. that's part of the, the domains that they do assess and plan, All right. okay? Yep. So the closing statement of the, of the management is quite good. You, you tell the patient what the plan is, what the follow-up plan is as well, and the red flags. That's yeah. very good. Okay. So I think overall is a good station, but Thanks. now let's go through the things that you didn't do, that yeah. we couldn't assess. So one of the things that I, I noticed you didn't do was the eyes. Yeah. So ideas, concerns, and expectations. Yeah. The issue is going to go between your math dosa yeah. and your physical examination. Yeah. So are you concerned about anything? You know, uh, do you have an idea what could be causing this? Yeah. Or what are your expectations today? Yeah. What do you expect me to do today for you? Yeah. you know, it's quite useful. And you, you did quite good. You did six minutes, which means that yeah. you have time to actually put all that, that in yeah. in the station. So that's quite good. Um, then the second thing, and it's, this is more about the physical, like the known verbal communication. So I like the way you move your hands. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you were raising them a bit too high, so I would probably bring them sort of in this sort of area, and then when you do that movement, it's quite useful. Right. Um, and then the, the tone of voice was really good. Very friendly consultation, it was mm. okay. I think in this particular case, the patient was a bit in a low mood sort of size, so I think your tone was appropriate. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks. Do yeah. you have any questions so far? No, I'm just happy with the feedback and happy with uh, you taking the time to go over the entire station one-on-one uh, -on -one with me. Super. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to give you a, a, a marks. I'm going to mark your yeah. station, okay? Yeah. So for the for every domain, which is data gathering, management, and interpersonal skills, this, the mark goes from zero to four, Yeah. okay? Zero means is a fail, one is a borderline fail, three is a borderline pass, and four is a excellent. Yeah. Okay? So what? how would you score yourself on data gathering? Um, well, I... I feel like I covered most of the differentials, but I did, I could have done better with the eyes, definitely, and with a couple more differentials as well. So I would give myself a two or a three. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I would go for a borderline pass. Yeah. Because, uh, as you mentioned, you missed a few things, but I think overall it was a very smooth yeah. sort of history taking and a bit organized. Just a few things maybe in yeah. the wrong place, but not major, which is quite good. And the eyes, as you mentioned. Now, in terms of management plan, how would you score yourself? Um, I, I, I think I'd, I'd give myself a borderline pass as well. Um, I was able to address the concerns right there and then, um, and the patient was happy with the plan in the end. Uh, 
So I, I would say a borderline pronounced. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna agree with you on that one, uh, especially because you you were very clear about what the diagnosis was. Yeah. So we think your sodium's low because of this medication. Yeah. And then you 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 created a management plan that involved the patient by knowing the red flags and when to attend and where to attend, but also the follow-up plan and then we're gonna do more bloods and how we're gonna change the medication, speak to a psychiatrist. So very very well thought plan. Uh, I would probably say the only thing you missed there was the fact that. You ask the patient to come back to the GP practice rather than A and E itself if he's presenting any of the red flags. Yeah, yeah. That, so that would be a bit more safe for the patient to go to A and E rather than to the GP practice yeah, you're if right. he's getting like red flags. I signs. agree. Okay. Yeah. And on the last one, last time I mentioned the interpersonal skills, how would you score yourself? Um, and that's a difficult one for me because, as you said, it's it's a station in which the patient is um, depressed. And I can tell he was really struggling with uh, with depression and, and fatigue due to his hyponatremia. Um, I think I did well. I, I would say a borderline pass, but it's certainly a challenging station because it's not the normal patient whose mood is 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 normal. Um, so I I'd say it's a borderline pass, but it was a difficult one. You are correct. It's, it's a very challenging scenario, especially because the patients you mentioned. It's not really you know, bright and happy, yeah. so you can't even really do a bit of joking around, yeah. and have a, like a good report with the patient, but I, I do agree with you, it was a challenging station, but however, that being said, your your history taking was very smooth and the questions were very straightforward, and they were simple in a way that the patient could understand, and your management plan was very good, and I think that when you explain things are very easy, you know, lay terms, it's quite useful for the patient, I think that's really good. I think your your uh, non-verbal communication was good as well, yeah. as well as your verbal communication. You had a few moments you made like non-verbal sounds, like sort of, mm, yeah. which in some cases the patient might take as a, you're doubting what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So we'll probably avoid those. So I would agree with you, borderline yeah. pass as well. All right. So what we do when we assess uh, um, the students is that we know that we do a scoring for each domain and then we do an overall score, which would be zero to four, pretty much the same. Uh, the only difference is this is basically whether you fail or you pass the station. I would probably say it's a borderline pass. Thank you. Can I get this on on writing on the paper? Yeah, of course. And the feedback on writing too, so I, that when I'm preparing to take the test, I can um, have a read of the feedback, um, and and that way I I can you know learn quicker and get better quicker. Yeah, of course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a look at the video again on my own and I'm going to write down everything yeah. for you and I'll give you the marking basically and your feedback.